In this video, I want to take a break from the normal web development that we've been learning and talk about Terminal. So Terminal is a text-based interface to your computer and it's software, and it's going to be really important when we go back into web development to understand how to use Terminal because a lot of the commands that we're going to be running to make sure that our web application builds are Terminal commands. So you may also hear the word shell, command prompt, command shell thrown around. Those are you know slightly different words with slightly different meanings, but they're all kind of referring to the same thing. I'm not going to really differentiate between them, so you may hear me say terminal sometimes. You may hear me say shell sometimes. Um, these are a general class of software. I've got a couple of examples here. So I've got Windows PowerShell. I've got Windows Command Prompt. I have a Linux Bash shell, and I have Windows Terminal here. So they're all slightly different. So the commands that you put into Windows PowerShell are different than the commands that you put into um, a Linux Bash shell like I have here. But they're all a text interface for interacting with your computer. So the normal things that you do on your computer, like create files, delete files, move files, download files from the internet, run software, all of those things you can do from your terminal. So let me give you a quick demo. Don't worry too much about the commands here. We're going to break them down one at a time as we go. <clears throat> but once I'm in a terminal environment, I can execute text commands like pwd for print working directory will tell me that I'm in my C drive users folder and then my account folder. And then from here, I could cd or change directory to my desktop. And I could look around using list to see what's on my desktop. And I can see a couple of folders, including my teaching folder here. Once I'm in my desktop, I could um, touch index.html. And then if I list again with ls, I can see, oh, here's a new file, index.html, that wasn't there before. And I can do things like rm index.html and list again to see that I have now removed that new file that was added there. So we're going to go through this slowly. We'll, we'll talk about the different commands, like some of the ones that I just showed you here. The key is that we are using text to um, send commands to our computer, so to do things like creating files or running other pieces of software. Like if you have Visual Studio Code installed, um, that often comes with setting up a code command that you can run from any terminal window. So if I do that, Visual Studio Code pops open. So why learn this? Well, one, it's kind of cool to be able to interact with your computer via text and not have to use your mouse. Two, it's really helpful for automation. So if I want to take a bunch of files that I have on my desktop and move them to another folder and rename them in the process, one way to do that is to write a shell script or a bash script to do that process. And then you don't have to drag and drop and rename by clicking around. So the third reason is that it's really common in modern web development setups, and that's why we're integrating it into this web applications course. Uh, we will need to understand it to run the software that builds our um, web application. And then the fourth reason is that a lot of servers, when you deploy your web application, are Linux machines. So the environment that you have on those looks something like this, where um, when you connect to that server, you can connect via a terminal window, and you can run commands on that server using bash or shell scripting. So it's, it's a helpful thing to know um, as a web developer. So a couple things before we get into it in terms of settings um, and, and setting up your machine. Different operating systems come with different shells by default, different terminal windows by default. So Windows has PowerShell. Um, there's a Unix shell on your Linux distributions. And then there's uh, Z shell or Z ZSH on Macs. Um, and the Mac shell and the Linux shell are pretty similar. So what we're going to do is, um, instead of using Windows PowerShell, use a Unix style shell um, on our Windows machine. So I'll have the link in the description to download and install Git Bash. And let me open up 
an example here. So here is me just opening up regular git bash on my computer. And um, git bash allows you to do things like use standard uh, Unix shell commands like ls and pwd and have them work on your Windows machine. So by the Windows users having this git bash set up, we will have a general compatibility across platforms. So Mac users, you use your default terminal. And Linux users, you use your default terminal or whatever one you have set up. And then Windows users will, will use git bash so that we're all on the um, sort of same platform. We can use the same commands. And you'll see me um, not actually use git bash, but use Windows Terminal here. And Windows Terminal is just a GUI for um, interfacing with other terminal software. So you can set this up if you're, you're curious, but it's not doing anything different than my git bash windows here, uh, git bash window here. And actually when I'm in Windows Terminal, I can open up a couple different ones. Like I can open up a PowerShell and be in PowerShell, or I can open up my Linux distribution on here, my Windows subsystem Linux and be in that bash. So, um, Windows Terminal here, this is just like the graphics layer. It's not actually changing anything, so you can follow along just fine in Git Bash. Okay, so I'm opening Windows Terminal here. Let me close these other ones down. If you are on a Mac, you're gonna open up Finder and you're gonna search for Terminal and then open up that application. And if you're on a Linux machine, then you probably already know how to open your Terminal window. Windows users, you just go to your start menu, search for git bash, and pop that open. By default, uh, let me open up a new terminal here. This is going to open up in your home directory. So wherever that is configured on your machine with your particular terminal, um, that's where you'll be. And that's often denoted by a tilde here. So if I do PWD, I can see that my home directory is this location on my computer. So if I pull up my file explorer and I go to C, I go to users, my account, this is the folder that I'm in. So one important concept to keep in mind as we're learning terminal is that your terminal window is in a location. You can imagine it's like our file explorer here where we have a particular folder open so anytime you're executing commands, you want to keep that context in mind. If I were to create a file in here, uh, so let me touch test.txt. And then if I look over here in File Explorer, I will see test.txt has been created here. If I execute this command in a different location on my computer, then test.txt is created in that different location. So I'm going to get rid of this test.txt over my File Explorer. I don't need it here. All right, so we've got our first command, pwd. I want to show you a few others that are useful and then just like a few things that are configured about terminal environments that you should know. So one, another one is who am I, which will print out the current user's name. So here I'm logged in as Mike West had. The clear command will allow me to clear whatever is in my terminal window. So if I have been executing a lot of things and I just want a fresh window, there we go. Everything is cleared then when you're in a terminal environment, um, like git bash or Windows Terminal here, if I use the up and down arrows, it allows me to cycle through past commands. So if I forgot like a useful command that I executed after I cleared that window there, like I wanna go back to PWD, I can just press the up arrow to cycle back there, hit enter and it will run again. The other thing that uh, terminal environments will do is try to auto-complete for you. So if I type in W for the start of who am I and I hit tab, um, here it's telling me with that W um, at the start, there are 688 possibilities for commands that I could run. Do I want to display them? So I'm going to hit no. Um, if I type in who A and then hit tab, it's auto-completing here with the, the full name of the command. And since I'm on a Windows machine, it's auto-completing with 
um, .exe. Don't worry about that. You may not see that on your uh, Mac or your Linux machine. So up and down arrows cycle through past commands and tab lets you autocomplete, which will, when you start tabbing as you're moving around, will allow you to move uh, much more quickly through terminal um, and execute commands more quickly. So let me clear again. Uh, another command that you can run is history. And history, if I run it without passing anything into it, is gonna give me a list of a bunch of recent commands that I have executed on my terminal window, including those past ones that we just saw, where I created a text file, asked who I am, cleared, etc. A lot of terminal commands will accept a parameter or multiple parameters. So if I type history again and I hit space and then like five, what it's gonna tell me is the five most recent commands that I ran. So we can here see history five, the most recent one, history, clear, who am I, PWD. A couple of things to keep in mind is that spaces matter. So history space five runs the history command with an argument of five. But if I type in history five without spaces, doesn't know what that is because it thinks that that's all one command. And also it's important to note that depending on your environment, it may be case sensitive. So history may be different than history all capitalized. I believe my Windows machine, uh, oh, okay, perfect. So my Windows machine is case sensitive here. Yours may or may not be. So um, I would recommend following the casing exactly and then paying attention to the spaces. One other thing that is useful to know before we start executing more commands is that you can cancel commands. So let me show you sleep. Sleep, if you uh, execute sleep and you pass in a number, it is going to sleep this terminal window for however many seconds I passed in, so five here. So let's say I ran a really long command, like I accidentally said 50, and now my terminal is locked up. If you hit Control C, that is gonna try to kill, uh, force quit whatever command I was just running. So that sleep did not actually sleep for 50 seconds, control C killed it. And that's gonna be important in web development because we're actually gonna have processes that run infinitely until we kill them. So control C will, will come in handy. So this is great, but it's useful to be able to go from your terminal to your file explorer or your uh, finder on Mac um, or go from your file explorer to your terminal window. So I'll show you how to do that. So let me close this and let's go in the direction from our terminal to our explorer. So if you're on Windows, there are two options. You can either say start and then pass in a period to indicate uh, open the current directory with the default software. That'll pop open my file explorer or I can do Explorer on Windows with period, and that will open my file explorer in that location. On a Mac, you're gonna have to use the open command instead of the start command. This is one of those differences between the two platforms. Okay, so when we're in a terminal window, we can easily go to file explorer if we need to for some reason. And then to go in the opposite direction, like let's say that I want to open up something that is in my teaching folder here on my desktop, uh, or I wanna open up that teaching folder in my terminal window. So one way to do that is if you have an existing window open, you can type in CD, open quotation mark, drag your folder over here to your terminal, close the um, quotation, and now we can see that this printout here has changed. I am now in desktop teaching. And if I do PWD, I can see, here we go. I'm in C users, my account, desktop, teaching. So that gets you to a particular folder. The other way that you can do it is if you right click on your folder on a Windows machine, uh, you will see git bash here, which will open up that thing in git bash. And you can see it's in desktop teaching. Or for me, since I have Windows terminal set up, I can open in Windows Terminal and do the same thing. On a Mac, I'll have a link in the description. You have to do a little bit of 
configuration uh, in your settings to get that right click open in to show up, uh, but you can do that. All right, so let's test out some of these commands in a new directory. So what I'm gonna do is on my desktop, create a new folder for terminal tests. Go in here and I just wanna put something uh, blank in here, like hello.txt. And then what I wanna do is go to this folder with a terminal window. So like we saw, I can either right click and um, open in git bash, or I'm just gonna do cd drag in this path here. Oh, whoops. So we can see that when I tried to drag it in, it actually inserted quotation marks for me. So when I drag this one in, I am not gonna throw quotation marks around it. Hit enter, and now we can see I'm in desktop terminal tests. And a little note here, the uh, command that we ran here didn't insert quotation marks for us because there were no spaces in this uh, file path. But because I added a folder here without really thinking that had a space in it, uh, terminal tests, when we try to refer to that, we actually have to use quotation marks to kind of group that all as one string. Because remember, spaces were how we were able to separate out um, the command from arguments that we pass into it. So, so spaces are meaningful. So if you have spaces in file paths, that's going to be um, annoying to deal with. So actually, you know what, now that uh, I see that I did that without thinking, what I'm gonna do is close this terminal window. Let me move this out of the background so that we're not looking at a bunch of stuff in our background. And um, let me rename this to terminal tests with no space. And then I will open it up in Windows Terminal again. So you will see when I'm going through projects, especially in web development, I will often not have any spaces in my file and folder names. Um, and that is for this reason that it's a little bit easier to deal with. Okay, so I'm in that terminal tests directory. So if I open that up over here, we can see there's a hello.txt. So let's run the ls command which will list all of the things that are in that directory. So I can see, ah, here's hello.txt. So another useful command that I teased earlier is cd, so cd for change directory. So if I'm in this terminal tests folder and I say cd dot dot, that means go up a directory. Dot dot refers to the parent. So if I go cd dot dot, I'm now at desktop, which would be over here. So I can see whatever's on my desktop. And if I ls, I should see games, miscellaneous teaching, terminal tests, and a hidden folder um, on Windows machines. So with cd, I can go up with dot, uh, with dot dot, um, and then I can go back down by typing in a relative path here. So I can go into terminal, um, and you can actually, I don't have to type the whole thing. I can just hit tab here to get that auto completed for me. So now I'm back in terminal tests. And just to show you that CD a little bit, uh, a, sh a few more examples. If I go CD dot dot slash dot dot, that goes up two directories. So I'm gonna go from terminal tests to desktop, um, and then I'm gonna go up to my users folder. So if I print out my directory now, I'm in C, users, Mike West had. And then I can go back down easily by doing CD, and I wanna go into my desktop. So I type in the start of desktop, hit tab, and then I can terminal tests and hit tab. And now I've gone down two folders uh, and I'm back in terminal tests where I can see hello.txt and I can print out my working directory. So CD, LS, PWD are useful to help you get around your machine and check where you are. So let's see that touch command that I showed earlier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my file explorer open so you can kind of see in GUI mode what's happening. Um, 
as I'm executing these commands. So if I use touch, which is a command that allows you to modify um, an existing file, change the timestamp on an existing file, but it also allows you to create empty files. If I touch um, testing.txt, that's going to try and create a file called testing.txt in wherever my current location is in my terminal here. So we see that pop up over here. And if I double click on this, this is going to go ahead and open up in uh, Visual Studio, which is my default for text files. It might open up in Notepad if you don't have Visual Studio code installed. You can also open that file by saying like start and then passing the name of the file. And that will open up your file with whatever the default is according to your operating system configuration. So that's an empty file. I can also put something into a file using uh, a little bit more complex of a command. So if I say echo, I'm a boss at terminal now. What this does, the echo command takes whatever you give it, echoes it back to you. So we can see that prints out to my terminal window when I execute it. If I hit the up arrow to bring that command back, and then I add a uh, greater than sign, this allows me to redirect. So instead of that echo showing up on my terminal, I can redirect the output to a file. So if I redirect it to testing.txt, I'm going to override that testing.txt with a file that should have this text. So if I do a start testing.txt, I'm a boss at terminal now. So it looks like that's working. We can also use this to do things like um, quickly set up a web project. So maybe I could uh, use mkdir, make directory. Let's call it simple web site. You can see that was created over here. I can echo h1 mad terminal skills and close the h1 don't worry if you're watching this and you don't know what h1s are um, this is just some basic html so i'm going to echo that and i'm going to redirect it to simple website slash index dot html let me get this all in one line well oh. So uh, my terminal window freaked out a little bit as I was read, um, sizing the window on the fly. This is one of the fun quirks of Windows Terminal, but this is the command that I executed. The rest of this, ignore that. So if I were to pull that command up again, let me, let me clear and show you it. Here we go. That's the command that I executed. So what that does is go into simple website test and add an index.html file there. So I could cd into simple website test and say start index.html, which will open my index.html with the default, and that is Chrome on my machine. And we can see mad terminal skills shown up. So this is the type of thing that if you want to like scaffold out a quick website, you could easily create the placeholder files. So like style.css, I could touch and I could create an index.js in here too, in that simple website. So you can see that if I ls index index um, style, and then I could code with the current directory, which is going to pop open Visual Studio Code with my three files already set up. Okay, last thing I want to show you is curl or client URL, which will allow us to actually make network requests. So let me CD up uh, a directory. So I'm going from my simple web website test up to terminal tests again, and LS to make sure that I know where I am. I got my hello testing simple website. I'm going to curl from HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com. And if I just run curl or client URL 
Um, this is going to take whatever it gets back from google.com and put it into my terminal window, which is a lot. So I'm going to clear this. And instead of curling it to my terminal window, I'm going to redirect to google.html. And we can see some info about uh, how long it took to download. And now there's a Google HTML here. So I could start google.html and see that it loads a, a cached copy that I downloaded of that Google HTML. And if I come over here and let's open it with Visual Studio Code or Notepad, whatever you have on your machine, you can see it's an HTML file. And if I use Visual Studio Code here to format this file, um, here we go. It'll make it a little more clear that this is an HTML file. Starts with HTML, we've got our head here, we've got our body, and all of this is filled in with the code that uh, came from Google servers. So last curl demo, I will make sure that this um, URL is in the description. But this is just some ASCII art from another project that I have in a gist on GitHub. And we're going to curl this text file down. So this URL, we're going to do the same thing. Curl. I'm going to paste in that uh, gist URL. Hit space. Direct it to dice.txt. Take a second to download. And then I could start up dice.txt and it'll open in Visual Studio here, and we can see that file has been downloaded to my machine. We can also see that over here, dice.txt. So this should be enough uh, to get you going in your terminal environment, and you can Google other things as they come up, like how do I do X in terminal? You can Google that, and you'll often get a lot of hits with advice on how to do things. A couple of caveats if you're on Mac and Linux, some commands will tell you that you have insufficient privileges. So pretend that I tried to list a protected folder here and it warned me instead of printing out these things, it said you don't have permission to do this. Uh, you can do super user do or sudo and then execute that command again. It'll prompt you for your password um, and then execute that command with administrative privileges. Be careful with that. Um, there is a reason why certain things are locked down, and it's to help prevent um, you making mistakes uh, or running scripts from the internet that you found that like do something bad on your machine. So just uh, keep that in mind that sudo exists for giving you administrative privileges, but make sure you know what you're doing when you execute it. If you're on a Windows machine, the process is a little bit different. So let me go ahead and grab my start menu so that you can see this. If I open up my start menu and say, look for git bash, if I right click on this, I can run it as an administrator. And now this is going to be elevated and it will have administrative privileges when it opens up. And I can do the same thing for Windows Terminal. So if you have permission errors, um, that is the way to get an administrative prompt, command prompt on um, Windows. Okay, so we've seen the basics. We know how to navigate around in our terminal window. We know how to kill commands that are long running commands that we want to kill. We know how to do some interesting stuff like grabbing stuff from the internet or opening Visual Studio. Now we're going to head back from our detour back into the world of web development and see how um, to use our terminal to automate some of the build process as we're building our web applications.